And we have a special guest joining us from our downtown studios this noon. Gary Peters, thank you so much for being here and speaking to us on a couple items. Oh, great to be with you. Yeah, well, a uh, first couple of questions that we want to discuss here, one of them being the coronavirus. Senator, you were part of a White House meeting this past week where you voiced some concerns about the potential funding to cuts. Can, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, absolutely. I, I'm the uh, ranking member of the Senate Homeland Security Committee, and certainly the coronavirus is a homeland security issue. Uh, this uh, could potentially could be a pandemic uh, that spreads uh, across the, the world. Uh, right now, the Chinese are working very hard to try to contain it uh, within their country, but still folks are, are getting out. Uh, and I think we need to be prepared for a pandemic and to make sure that we have sufficient resources to deal with it. Unfortunately, the Trump administration has cut funding in the past for this type of activity. Uh, we need to be prepared in case uh, this disease spreads throughout our country. Yeah, I know that's a big topic, especially when it comes to airports here in our area, making right. sure that we have the proper security, right? Uh, we do. And so that's uh, right now our, our main goal is try to slow down the spread uh, of this virus. The, the good news is that it seems as if fewer cases are coming forward, including deaths as well as those that are contracting it. There has been some hope that as the weather gets warmer, you see the coronavirus actually decrease. However, we're starting to see some cases in Singapore, and it's 90 degrees in Singapore, so that may not be the case. So there are a lot of questions, a lot of concern, but certainly we're working to, to keep it uh, out of the United States as long as possible, and should it come into the United States, we need to be prepared to, to treat folks uh, that come down with uh, the illness. All right, keeping an eye on that, let's talk about a bill that you recently proposed, shifting gears here to the nation's food supply and the agricultural industry. T tell us a little bit about that bill. Well, I'm very pleased, a uh, bill that I've written has now passed through both the uh, House and the Senate and it goes to the president for signing. And what it does is it increases the number of agricultural inspectors at our borders here in Michigan as well as around the country. These inspectors keep harmful pests from coming across the borders. It's important for public health, but also to protect our agricultural industry. If you get uh, harmful insects that come in, it can absolutely devastate our agricultural industry here in Michigan. Uh, this legislation increases the number of inspectors up to the 700 that we think is the shortage. And probably equally as important, uh, it adds canine teams, those incredible dogs that have very sophisticated noses that help us protect our borders. So um, kind of playing into that a little bit, PFOS, that's been a big issue. Um, you've been addressing water contamination problems here at home concerning PFOS, uh, these chemicals polluting our drinking water. Um, Sandy Winstelt, uh, someone, a uh, woman from Belmont, she lost her husband of 25 years in 2016, um, and she also has high amounts of chemicals in her blood. Um, let's go ahead and take a listen to her now and what she has to say. In 2016, Joel went in for what we thought was a minor surgery to repair a hernia. And when he came out, he was diagnosed with stage four liver cancer. And he passed away three weeks later. The year after that, I was contacted by the um, DEQ, Department of Environmental Quality. And I learned then that my groundwater was contaminated with extraordinarily high rates of PFAS. Um, it turned out the Christmas tree farm had actually been a dump site that Wolverine Worldwide had used to dump tannery waste, which is full of scotch fire. We need polluters to be responsible for cleaning this up. There's a lot of research showing that they were well aware. That was Sandy Winstelt of Belmont. Obviously, PFOS has impacted her dramatically and shifted her life. Uh, how are you addressing this issue? Yeah, Sandy's uh, story is very compelling. Unfortunately, there are a lot of other folks that are faced with a similar issue. PFAS are these forever chemicals, things that have been in our stain, stain resistance, uh, water resistance, it's in firefighting foams. And of the 700 contaminated sites all across the country, 200 of them are here in Michigan. We have very high levels and people are exposed to these high levels. So I've been working to clean these sites up, to pass legislation to do that, to set a standard that's safe. I also recently passed legislation to take uh, these chemicals out of firefighting foams uh, that were used uh, primarily at airports. This will protect firefighters' lives, uh, obviously, uh, but also prevent this material from getting into our water system and having the contamination that Sandy's dealing with and far too many Michiganders. And one of those spots was uh, Selfridge. That's been a big hot spot. Is there anything in particular that you're doing there? Selfridge, uh, any of the air bases, because uh, uh, the firefighting foams used by firefighters on air bases, uh, many times uh, that got into the water table. We have some issues uh, at Selfridge uh, that's really being evaluated right now. The main issue is up in the Alpena area of the former Wordsmith Air Force Base. Uh, we have a significant problem up there. In fact, the, the adjoining uh, lake 
uh, you just see basically sudsy foam at the lake because of the amount of uh, PFAS that's out there. And these are families who are uh, frightened, just like Sandy, are dealing with uh, some major health issues. So we've got to address this, and we have to do it aggressively. All right. Well, Senator Peters, thank you so much for joining us in the studio this afternoon. Thank we really you. appreciate your take on the coronavirus, PFAS, and we're looking forward to seeing what happens in Washington, D.C.